Hello, I'm shooting an impromptu video tonight for my fourth day of the 30 day video challenge that I'm doing. And I had a piece of content that I thought I was going to use, but realized that I couldn't use it. So I sat for a while and thought, well, what am I gonna do now? And I was really aggravated and annoyed at myself for not being more prepared. And then I thought, wait a second, Jen, you have decades upon decades upon decades of journals. There must be something that is worthy of sharing. So I opened up a folder that I have that says Jen's Journals 1986. You probably can't see that because it's so dark, but it says Jen's Journals 1986. In 1986, I was 16, 15, 16 years old. And in it, I found something not from 1986, but from 2012, um, which is when my, my grandma, Millie, passed away. And if I remember correctly, this was the eulogy that I wrote for her. And I was just reading it through and thought that this is beautiful enough to be shared again. So I'm going to memorialize my grandma Millie, who for my children, her great-grandchildren, we called Grandma Bubby. Bubby is a Yiddish term for uh, grandma. So I'd like to share that with you and I hope you enjoy it. I wrote this and read this at her uh, funeral service in I believe it was 2012. She died at 90 years old. She lived a really long time. Okay. Oh, and by the way, it's handwritten. Joshua and Madeline sat on either side of me as I told them about their grandma Bubby passing away. Joshua and Madeline sat beside me on the couch like bookends yesterday as I told them about their grandma Bubby passing away. It was interesting to watch my children cry over the loss of their great grandma. They felt a deep sadness, although they knew little about her. It took me back to when Grandpa Dave passed. That was her husband, by the way. I was about seven, the same age as Madeline. I cried deeply. I cried as deeply as she did. And at that point, although my mother was deeply saddened herself at the loss of her father, he was only 58 years old, by the way, she began to tell me stories of Grandpa Dave. Those stories comforted me and grounded me and helped me to understand my place in our family's history. With that in mind, I sat with Joshua and Madeline and, while still holding them tight, began to tell them some stories. My first memories of Grandma Millie, whoops, sorry, ruining the flow of that, but something just fell off of my lap. My first memories of Grandma Millie were when she lived in a big apartment on Holt Avenue with Grandpa Dave. I remember the anticipation of going there to drink orange soda, lovingly made from the seltzer water and orange syrup that was delivered to her home each week. Making it was made special. Oh, making it more special was how I called it seltzer, yet she would call it seltza. She would say, come bubbles, come get your seltza. That Brooklyn accent never ceased to amuse me. The super sugary sweet cold soda was like grandma love in a cup. At some point, they moved to a beautiful new condominium complex. There were fountains and trees like a little forest. I remember having a sleepover there with my sister. Grandpa Dave fiddling with his beloved stereo system, which we were not allowed to so much as breathe on, and Grandma Millie straightening the quilt on their huge bed after I had sat on it. I was well aware of their sense of pride for their home. The bed was always made. My mom still takes pride in a neatly made bed, as do I. Now I understand why I also require my bed to be made. I'm connected to her. Grandma moved to a little apartment 
after Grandpa died. We were there often. A glass bowl of thin, steamy egg noodles on the dining table replaced the seltzer water and orange syrup. Come, Bubbles, eat. The noodles are hot. Eat them before they get cold. The delicious, hot, buttery noodles was like grandma love in a bowl. Jumping ahead many years now, I didn't realize how much I cherished being called Bubbles until, during my pregnancy with Joshua, I heard my mother telling me that Grandma Millie wanted to know how her little Bubbles was doing. She was not asking about me. She was asking about Joshua rolling around calmly in my tummy. I was no longer her little Bubbles. This was now reserved for a new generation to love and adore. With her three great-grandchildren, Joshua, Madeline, and my niece Mia, Grandma Millie, now living in a retirement home, would walk the halls to the dining room, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren surrounding her, proudly saying to everyone, These are mine. She would say little else. The proof was in the pudding. A proud and quiet matriarch surrounded by her bubbles. I don't remember ever seeing her happier, beaming. Grandma Millie was often quiet. She kept her emotions in. She was overwhelmed with adoration for us all. I think she enjoyed just sitting and observing and soaking in all the generations of love. Joshua listened to my stories of Grandma Bubby quietly, absorbing them. He asked no questions. I sense that he is grateful for having known Grandma's mommy, having been able to hug and kiss her, knowing that she held stories and experiences deep within, yet never asking to hear them. Madeline, on the other hand, much more precocious and the antithesis of my quiet, stoic grandmother, cried, Who will tell me about what it was like to live during the Martin Luther King Jr. times? I guess now it's time to sit on Grandma Audrey's lap and listen to some more stories. Thank goodness for this family. Thank you, Grandma, for giving us stories to tell. Thank you for this family. Thank you for letting me be your bubbla for a little while. So that's my day four. Just a story of the history of one of the people who is responsible for me being here and for me being me. And after reading that again and thinking about who my grandmother was, it's very, very clear to me that the fact that I am autistic uh, is very much connected to the fact that my mother was also most likely autistic and the fact that my grandmother was also most likely autistic. <laughs> uh, all three of us are, well, they were and I am pretty quiet people who like to observe rather than dive into situations. Um, of the three generations of women, I turned out to be the most vocal, but I think that's more a generational Gen X thing than anything else. Um, but I'm really proud to be connected to my grandma, Millie, my bubby, and um, I just hope that my children gift me with grandchildren at some point so that I can call somebody my little bubbla. All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks for being with me.